third graders. We are going to get started on a new project today, and we're going to be learning about several of the elements of design that we use often in art. Actually, you use elements of design all the time in art. You can't make a project without using them. So the elements that we are going to be working with are lines, which you know a lot about, shapes, which you also know a lot about, and we will also be talking about space. Now, when we talk about space in art, we are not talking about outer space. We are talking about how to show if things are close to us or if they're far away from us. If you remember or think back to your tree project that you drew last year, right at the beginning of the school year, um, it was like a night scene and we made a fence with shadows. We learned about space then. So just a review, when you're talking about space, if something is close, like I'm close right now, and I'm sorry, but it looks kind of funny. If I'm close, I look big. Now, if I just step back a little ways from my iPad, I look a lot smaller than I did when I was close. So if something is close to you in space, it looks big. And if something is far away in space, it looks small. We do that on a piece of paper not only by drawing big and small, but also by where we draw things on our paper. So if something is close to us, one, we draw it big, but we also start it at the bottom of the paper. So for your tree project last year, your main tree started right at the bottom so that you could make it tall and big on your paper. And then to make something look like it's in the middle ground, you move the bottom of the tree or whatever it is you're drawing up a little bit on your paper and you just draw it a little bit smaller than the tree that's close or the object that's close. Now, if something is far away on your paper, you're going to draw the bottom of it up even higher than that middle tree and you're going to draw it tiny like this, okay? And then it's also super important that you put a horizon line in there. That's really going to make your objects look like they are close to you or far away from you. So we are going to be making a landscape, which is a picture of land. Um, there could be trees, there could be flowers, there could be water, there could be mountains. And we are going to be adding a lot of patterns into this project with lines and with shapes. I will do that demonstration in just a minute. Okay, so we are going to work on drawing our landscape today and adding some of those lines and shapes and patterns into all of the different areas of the landscape. Um, what I want you to, well, first of all, it does not matter what direction you have your paper in, so you can have it horizontal like I have mine, or you can have it vertical. Um, we're going to just kind of work our way back on our paper or up on our paper so that we're showing different types of space, okay? So I am just going to start by making a ground line. Maybe I want it like that. Maybe closer to me down towards the bottom and I'm not positive that this is in the camera so I'm gonna draw it kind of big. Maybe even closer to the front of the picture I want to make some grass, oop. And I just make the grass go in different directions all the way across my paper. And then I'm going to continue making different layers of the ground, okay? So it's going to kind of look like this is a hilly picture. Maybe some of them are steeper hills than others like that. Maybe I have, maybe I have some water in there. Maybe there's a little bit of a lake right there. And then I have like a mountain or something back here. So you kind of decide. You don't have to have mountains. You don't have to have water. You just decide. 
And then maybe I want, um, you could do the sun coming off this way, off on the corner. I don't typically have you draw it that way, but um, you could, or you could have like the sun rising or the sun setting. It's completely up to you. Now, I'm gonna go back in and add some details. So maybe I wanna add a tree into my project. Like that. Maybe I want another tree that's further back in the distance. So maybe it's back here on this hill. So it's up higher than this, the bottom of this tree. And I draw it much smaller, okay? Now right now, it looks like my tree is see-through because I'm seeing the mountain behind the tree. Um, I'm seeing some of the hills behind the, or through the tree. And I shouldn't be able to see those things because my tree is in front of them. So I have to go back in and erase everything that I can see in my tree. Okay, I don't wanna be able to see the mountains. I don't wanna be able to see the hills. I don't wanna see the water if it's going through my tree. The only thing I should see is my tree trunk and the leafy part of the tree, okay? Same thing on this tree. <clears throat> so it now looks like this, okay? Now, you may wanna add something more into the picture. You could add an animal, but it will be kind of hard to start adding the detail or the designs into it. Um, you could add a building, like if it's an old shed or something, but typically in landscapes, it's just pictures of the land, sometimes an animal, sometimes like an old um, barn or things like that, but the main focus should be the land, okay? So I'm gonna say that this is good. Um, the next step for me to do is to begin adding my designs in. Now you're going to do these with marker eventually, so you don't want to um, push hard with your pencil. But in each space, you are going to put a different design, okay? So this would also be very similar to a Zentangle. I'm trying to think, yes, you guys did the Zentangle pumpkins. So this is similar to that and you can use some of those designs in here if you would like to, okay? I don't want you to repeat a design unless if you want, if you have more than one tree and you want your design to be the same in both trees, that's okay with me. But otherwise I don't want anything repeated. So maybe in my trees, I just wanna fill them in with swirls like this. Okay, and you might have some big and you might have some small, but you're going to completely fill the leafy part in with this design or whatever design you decide to use. And then maybe in my tree trunk, I want to do something like this. Again, they're your designs. So you come up with the different designs and take your time. I'm not really doing a great job of taking my time right now. So again, if you want, um, you can do this exact same design over here in this tree. Okay. But again, take your time. Now, I highly recommend that you don't get too tiny with your designs. Maybe I just want, maybe in this water space, I just want some wavy lines to kind of make it represent water. But space them apart a little ways so that you don't have a hundred lines to fill in. Okay, or maybe here I want to do zigzags. Space them apart again so you don't have so much to color in later. Now, I don't mean make great big huge gaps. That one actually might be a little bit big. All I'm saying is 
put them sort of close to each other so you don't have so much work to do, okay? Um, also, like, don't do something like this where they end up crossing over each other unless it's done nicely like I did in my tree trunk, okay? Because this is going to be very hard to color later. So this is your job for today. Next time will likely be a work day. We'll have to see how far you get in class today. Um, but next time will probably be a work day on um, finishing up and adding more designs into each section of your landscape. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know.